Hello, soon to be nurse practitioners. This is Miss Cohen, and I bring to you the Nurse Practitioner Board's Review Cardiology. You requested it, I bring it to you. So let's talk about the heart and get you ready to pass your board. So let's get started. The stethoscope you have the diaphragm and you have the bell. The diaphragm is the larger part, the bell is the smaller one. With the diaphragm, you would want to use it to hear mid to high pitch sounds, such as your mitral regurg or aortic stenosis. The smaller part, or the bell, it's best used for low tones, such as an S3 and an S4, which we're going to talk about more. Here's your heart. And I know you know your heart because you made it through RN school and you passed. And I just want to quickly review that the apex of the heart is the bottom portion of the heart, right? Right down here. And it's best found or heard at the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line on the left side of the chest. The base of the heart is up top, top of the heart, all right? And what I need you to remember is just quickly, it's the, um, the way the oxygenated versus deoxygenated blood travels. I know this is so basic, right? But here you have inferior vena cava, deoxygenated blood enters through the superior vena cava into the right atrium, right atrium to the right ventricle, out to the lungs through the pulmonary, um, through the pulmonary artery into the lungs to pick up that oxygen, comes back through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, into the left ventricle, pump through the aorta to the rest of the body. That may come in handy and I'll tell you why. Well, it's important for you to understand S1, S2, S3, and S4 sound, right? S1 and S2, S1 is your systole, your lub, it's the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve. You have to know that. Best heard fifth intercostal space on the left side. Unlike the S2, which is your diastole, it's your dub, you know, lub dub, which is the closure of the aortic and pulmonic valves, your semilunar valves. Make sure you know S1 sound. All right, closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve, AV valves. Put a little star next to your notes on that one. So S2 is best heard on the second intercostal space left side. In my murmurs lecture, um, I do a really nice job at adding this information there so you have a visual. Um, but briefly, S1, S3, S4 are best heard on the bottom, right? Fifth intercostal space left side, right? S2 is the only one that it's best heard up top on the second intercostal space of the left side. Now, remember in my reviews, whenever you see something that is bolded in green, you should put a little star next to that and make sure you know that. So here goes, best heard second intercostal space of the left side for S2. And you should also know that an S2 is normal during inspiration, but if you hear it on expiration as well, that's not normal, all right? It's abnormal if you hear it on inspiration and expiration. Make sure you know that. And then we have S3. Now you know how I have funny ways of teaching you things so you can remember them, but S3 sound is best heard for people who have fluid overload. Now look at the number three, it looks chunky. It almost looks like a pregnant woman, right? The breast and the belly, <laughs> literally. So who is most likely to get an S3 sound? That would be your fluid overload, such as your CHF for congestive heart failure and pregnancy. So remember the chunky three, all right? You may hear an S3 on children and maybe normal athletes, um, and it's best heard, like I already told you, fifth intercostal space on the left side. Now, who gets an S4? And you have S1, S2, S3, S4. S4 is the oldest one out of the four, right? So guess, guess who gets this? Old people. Older people will get an S4 sound. It's due to a stiff left ventricle or left ventricular hypertrophy, all right? Most commonly heard on elderly because of atherosclerotic vessels. They're old, okay? And again, best heard 
fifth intercostal space on the left side. Which one is heard up top? S2, right? S1, S3, and S4. Fifth intercostal space on the left side. All right, let's talk about MI, all right? Acute myocardial infarction. What is going on? Your acute myocardial infarction is also known as your ST elevation infarction, also known as your STEMI, also known as your acute coronary syndrome, or in simpler terms, your heart attack. What is happening in a heart attack? Well, there's blood flow that is decreased to the heart or it stops going into part of the heart muscle. And in this picture, it could be because of a blocked artery, okay? So if you stop getting blood supply to the heart, it hurts, all right? The heart is a muscle. It will hurt. So you get chest pain, chest pressure, crushing pressure, like an elephant is sitting on the chest. I know you know this stuff. Chest tightness, pain radiating to the arm, to the jaw, diaphoresis, the skin is cool, clammy. The body's telling you there's something really bad happening, right? Shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting. The pain is provoked by physical exertion, because think about it. Either you're going up the stairs, you're not getting blood into the heart, your body's gonna tell you, hello, it's hurting because I need blood, oxygen. If there isn't any, it's gonna hurt. Or heavy meal. All right, pain continues at rest and it's relieved with nitroglycerin, okay? Risk factors, older age, smoking, hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, because you get the clot, right? And when we think of hyperlipidemia, you should be thinking increased LDL, decreased HDL, and increased triglycerides in sedentary life. Now, quick tip, if you get these confused, LDL, L is for lethal. It's the bad cholesterol, L for lethal, bad cholesterol. So that one goes up and it puts you at a higher risk for a heart attack. HDL, H is for healthy. That's the good cholesterol. Well, well in this case, it's down, okay? And high triglycerides, no good, all right? So heart attack. That's your acute myocardial infarction. So for the purposes of taking the test, the test will give you a scenario. There's a gentleman that is older and he's a smoker and he was going up the stairs when all of a sudden he felt like an elephant was sitting on his chest. He started sweating profusely. He tried sitting down, but the pain would not be alleviated. Um, and he felt nauseous and he became pale and cool and clammy. What would you do? Well, you realize the guy is having a heart attack. So either call 911, send him to the emergency room. Um, don't give him an appointment to see you in a week, right? Get him taken care of. 